touched me? Takes me back to middle school, you know, standing in line, all that jostling and pushing and not being quite aware of how big your body is. I swear, some kids are just out to annoy one another, and so that question, who touched me, are fighting words. In Jesus' day, who touched me were fighting words too, but for different reasons. In our gospel lesson today, Jesus was in the press of the crowd. In the midst of the usual push and shove, Jesus perceived a different kind of touch. Power flowed out of him. Someone had accessed his source. Someone was healed. In other cases in scripture, Jesus gives the word for healing. But in this case, the healing was taken without his permission. But this touch was problematic for other reasons as well. This touch crossed cultural boundaries. A woman did not touch a man in public. A woman did not touch a man outside her family. And a woman who was ritually unclean, as she was, having been a, a bleeding person, having an illness of blood for 12 years, a ritually unclean person did not touch someone else because those categories of pollution or holiness could not be crossed without some kind of spiritual intervention to bring someone back into that right place again. It was a contagious spiritual condition, and by touching, she would have conveyed that same social isolation that she was under, that same spiritual condition. Touching like this was unthinkable. Yet in her desperation, 12 years of illness, doctor after doctor, and only growing worse, this woman took matters into her own hands. She takes a leap of faith. If I just touch his clothing... She reached out for the healing that she needed, and she got it. Now, as she stood before Jesus, her worst fears come true. Jesus knows. Who touched me, he said. Now, she has to admit what she has done. Now she has to tell how she has broken the taboo, how she has reached out beyond the boundary, how she has violated his personal space, full of shame for her situation and her actions. She is now exposed. She expects judgment. Have you ever found yourself in a similar condition where you felt like you had done something wrong, where you had transgressed a boundary, and now you await the consequences? It's not a great feeling. When I was a senior in college, I wrote an 80-page thesis on Mary Magdalene. It was my honors thesis, a capstone work of a full year's labor. I finished the paper and turned it in. And as I was awaiting my chance to defend it, one of the professors who was reading it called me into her office. She was the professor that taught the research methods class. I want to show you a few passages in your paper, she said. And she had me read them aloud. Is this your work, she asked. Yes, I said. Actually, it's not, she said. And then the professor began to open a volume of the history of Christianity, and she pointed me the exact same words I'd just been reading. Apparently, I had lifted these passages from the book. That's plagiarism, she said. I was mortified. 
how could I have done this? I, I took the notes. I thought I'd put it into my own words. But here they were staring at me from the pages of my manuscript, exactly the same as the textbook. My whole academic career flashed before my eyes, disqualified, disgraced, probably not even graduating. Definitely no honors thesis. Sometimes we make choices that have unforeseen circumstances. Looking back, we say, oh, I shouldn't have done that, or I wish I had. There are so many cases where the world is not forgiving, where we break the rules and then we incur the judgment we deserve, and we are full of shame. We know there are times when we pay a price for our mistakes, even innocent mistakes. But today in our gospel lesson, Jesus sees things differently. He didn't think of either or categories like clean or unclean. When he saw the woman before him, he saw a person, not a category. He saw a person in need and in faith. When he asked, who touched me? It was a simple question. She heard judgment, at least in my read of the text, but it was a question. And when in fear and trembling this woman admitted to what she has done, there was no judgment, only affirmation. Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Her boldness was not chastised. It was applauded. To me, this is a story of grace, of liberation from sure punishment. It is a story of healing. A woman set free from years of ailment and social isolation. But it is also a story of learning to see differently. Jesus saw this woman not as a problem or a burden or a shameful situation. He saw her as a precious member of the family, a daughter. Jesus saw in this woman a faith worth commending a faith worth emulating, a faith that changed things, that gave her the healing that she sought. This woman's willingness to break the taboo of ritual purity was groundbreaking. And in fact, Jesus goes on to do the very same thing when he touched Jairus' dead daughter because it was also polluting to touch a dead body. Jesus was not stopped by the taboos of his day. Like the woman who touched his cloak, Jesus reached out to take this little girl by the hand and raise her up. He reached beyond the categories of his day to heal and to give life. As I consider this story, it seems possible that Jesus healed not only the woman and the little girl on this day, but also the people who witnessed his actions. People in the crowd, perhaps, who had written off family members and neighbors as ritually impure. They no longer needed to judge these people. They saw for their own eyes that Jesus did not cut them off, think in either or categories, but saw them as fellow brothers and sisters. And I imagine people going home and being able to be reunited with those whom they've been separated from, perhaps for years. I imagine relationships healed and restored. I believe that those of us who hear this story today have that same possibility for healing because we too carry our own shame about the things that we have done or should have done. 
things that we're still punishing ourselves for when truly the punishment is paid. Or perhaps, as in the case of the woman who touched Jesus' cloak, were never actions worth punishing at all. The power of Jesus blows away the stale air of judgment and ushers in the cool breeze of grace. The power of Jesus heals us and sets us free. So, what happened with the honors thesis? While I was still reeling from the revelation that I had plagiarized, the professor went on, I can tell you weren't trying to cheat. You cite the works right here in your footnotes. But we do need to fix these quotes and make them your own. And if you plan to do any more research, take a methodology class. I made the corrections, defended my thesis, and graduated, and swiftly went to seminary where I became a pastor, not a scholar. That was a good move. It's for all kinds of reasons. But I take this as one of many stories from my own life about grace, the healing power of grace. Because in these experiences and words of the professor, I was healed just a little bit about my fear of failure and correction. And I found a way to grow. I have experienced that healing grace in the lives of so many other people. And I bet you have seen it too. I hope you are hearing that healing, liberating message right now. You are forgiven. Or perhaps even, it's not your fault. And with that gift of healing grace, that gift of forgiveness, you can share it. You can cross the boundaries that separate you from others. Maybe people you know very well, members of your own family, or maybe people you're isolated from because of the way we're taught, the boundaries and taboos that we're supposed to observe, but actually aren't of God at all. The healing that Jesus offers in this story, these stories, is about giving life where there was only death, bringing people together where there was only separation. And it is the healing that we receive and share in the name of Jesus. We do not have to bear shame because Jesus liberates us. So... Let us walk in the footsteps of Jesus. Let us cross the boundaries of our day, perhaps even breaking a few taboos. May we reach out with that forgiveness and healing that we have already received. Dwell deeply in that place of healing and forgiveness. That you too may reach out with that healing touch that you may share Jesus' healing with others. Amen.